Welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Rev. Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and we're so excited you're here today as we're having a wonderful celebration led by our United Methodist women, and you'll be seeing all of those folks throughout this worship service. So on behalf of them and everyone at Douglas Avenue, welcome. We want to encourage you to use our contact form. The link to that is in the header of this worship service. It's also in the comments. There's there's a QR code here for you as well, so please take advantage of that. We want to be able to be in contact with you to get you our e-newsletter, which has all of the information about how to connect with Douglas Avenue and all of the opportunities for fellowship and uh, study and service. And there's also a place on that contact form for your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and our prayer team. So we really encourage you to use that today, particularly if it's your first time to join with us in online worship. We really want to be able to connect with you and support you in your life of faith. Now, when we gather for online worship, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. When we covenant to participate, that means, well, we're going to participate. This isn't just a random video you're watching. It's worship that we are celebrating God, United Methodist Women, that we're gathered together. So we encourage you to turn off other devices and distractions, light a candle if that helps you to focus in, and then sing the songs and pray the prayers and just join fully in with all your heart and soul in this time of worship. And then we covenant to be a blessing. And that means that the way we're in the comment section together, the way that we're maybe gathered with people as we're doing this worship service together, the way we're sending this out into the community, into the world, that all of it is a blessing in the way that we are together. Again, we're so glad that you are here and welcome to worship. Good morning. My name is Jill Gordon, and I'm president of United Methodist Women here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And I'd like to welcome you to United Methodist Women's Sunday. United Methodist Women is the largest denominational faith organization for women with approximately 800,000 members. We are a community of women whose purpose is to develop a creative, supportive fellowship and to expand concepts of mission through participation in the global ministries of the church. We are a community of women who nurture and encourage one another in our spiritual growth and personal development. Members raise up to $20 million each year for programs related to women, children, and youth in the United States and more than 100 countries around. Locally, we give to missions here at the church. We give to missions in the local Springfield. Regionally, we support the Cunningham Children's Home in Urbana and the Leslie Bates Friendship House in East St. Louis. What is a circle? A circle is a small group that allows members an opportunity to focus on missions and spiritual growth. Here at Douglas, we have five, which is really great. 
Elizabeth and Miriam, they meet during the days. Usually Elizabeth meets the first Monday and Miriam the second Wednesday. Miriam Circle also has a sewing group associated with them that meets on the third Thursday of the month. Deborah Anna Circle, they meet after church every other month. And Lydia and Esther Circles are evenings and they try to meet monthly. This is all before COVID, so we're not quite meeting as much, but we're trying to get back in the swing of things. Today's program, um, I've based on the Knitted Together with God's Work, which is our theme for this year for United Methodist Women. So I hope you enjoy today's program. United Methodist Women foster spiritual growth, develop leaders, and advocate for justice, and a global pandemic did not slow down the work. Responding to the challenges and anxieties of the time, United Methodist Women modified outreach and programs, answering God's call to turn faith into action and making a difference in the world and in our communities. The work continues through creating spiritual connection with virtual programs, prayer, soul care, wellness, and studies. Serving others by providing food, care, masks, soaps, and basic needs where needed, as well as a trusted source in the community to get COVID vaccinations. And continuing cutting-edge advocacy like interrupting the school-to-prison pipeline, webinars in Just Energy for All, faith talks on life and social justice issues, and through project grants. The work continues, encouraging growth by offering leadership development days and doing the business of electing a new board of directors. Educating for Mission with online Mission U Learning, conversations with partners through Voices from the Field and developing deaconesses and home missioners through virtual learning. And the work continues through gifts for national and global programs, grants and scholarships. United Methodist women all over the world are doing the work as bold spiritual women, united in commitment, united in leadership, putting faith, hope, and love into action. Hi, I'm Abigail Klein and I'm from Esther Circle. Hi, I'm Nancy Gillespie and I'm a member of Miriam Circle and I'm also in the Bell Choir for this year. Longtime member of Douglas Church. Please join us in this litany prayer for United Methodist Women Sunday. Your line is Hallelujah, Amen. Let's practice saying that together now. Hallelujah, Hallelujah amen. amen. Let us cry out to God who created us for justice and joy. We are God's people who must be about the work of mission in our day. Hallelujah, Hallelujah amen. amen. We thank you, Lord, for prayer and study that challenge our assumptions. We thank you, Lord, for your word that breaks open our hearts, that leads us to see with your eyes, that inspires us to be more persistent in speaking up. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Amen. We thank you for our foremothers who stepped out of their places for the sake of mission. We thank you for their witness and their work. We thank you for the opportunity to lay a strong foundation for the women yet to come women who will also witness to your love and grace. Hallelujah, amen. We thank you for the company of the saints who sing with you in glory. Strengthen our resolve to persist in prayer and action. We are witnesses to your mercy and splendor. Hallelujah, amen. Please join us in singing, Whom Shall I Fear, God of Angel Armies. Under 
I'm Ashley Rao. Um, I am a member of the Esther Circle for Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, um, and I am here to have you join me in our opening prayer. Loving God, be with us in this time of worship. Bless us with your vision of righteousness and peace for all people and all creation. Help us now to hear what you are teaching us in this time. Grant us the gift of your spirit that we may understand how we are being knit together into the body of Christ. Give us compassionate hearts to see those in our community who need dignity and respect. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Please join me in sharing the peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you and respond and also with you. Share that in the comments with one another, with me, and with these folks in our church community. Peace be with you. Hi, it's Diane Steinbaker. I'm a member of UMW. I'm also a member of the Prayer Circle, Miriam Circle, and Zephyr Sunday School class. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Linda Smith. I'm a member of UMW and Miriam Circle. I'm also financial secretary, a member of the handbell choir and the church choir. Peace be with you. Hello, this is Sarah Rattery. I'm a member of Douglas Avenue Methodist Church. I belong to Elizabeth Circle, been an active member for many years. Peace be with you. Good morning, I'm Julie Crable. I'm on the staff parish committee. I'm in bell choir and I'm in Lydia Circle. Peace be with you. I'm Martha Clark. I'm part of Miriam's Circle, and I love to come to the church, and I do many things here. Peace be with you. It's time for small talk, so I want to encourage all the children who are with us in online worship to get in really close to your device and screen for this special time of small talk. It is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and Laud the Lamb. So let's get ready right now for small talk.
Hello everybody. It is Miss Lori and Vlad the Lamb and his helper Cohen. Now Cohen and Vlad are doing a chore for me today. They're sweeping. You know how if you're having people over you kind of like want to tidy up a little bit. So he's sweeping. Right? Yes. Now earlier Luna, I don't think you're helping. Earlier, Laud was trying to sweep with here. Let me show you. I don't know if he was being funny or what, but he was just using one piece of the broom to sweep. That didn't work very well. It didn't work well at all. And it reminds me of when we try to just do everything on our own. When you add all of these bristles together, it can get so much done. And today we are kind of celebrating our United Methodist women in church today. And it reminded me a little bit of how much all of these women get done all together, not alone, all together. So just remember that guys, to work with others really well, right Laud? And you'll get so much done so many good, wonderful things that you can accomplish for others. Have a great day, guys. Love you. Bye. Good morning. My name is Barb Eldridge. And my name is Martha Clark. We're both a member of Merriam Circle. Today's reading from the Bible is Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 45. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy that was promised by the angel, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But Mary was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and the end of his kingdom and in his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who is said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in Elizabeth's womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me for as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy, and blessed is she who believed that there would be fulfillment of what was once spoken to her by the Lord. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. It is a pleasure to have Jill Gordon bring our message today. Of course, Jill is the president of the United Methodist Women Unit of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church and president of Lydia Circle.
Jill is an active leader in the Board of Trustees, participates in Seeker Sunday School, helps with children's ministries and mentors youth, just to name a few of the ways that she lives out her call to ministry. For her day job, Jill serves as finance and data specialist for Frontline Co. here in Springfield, Illinois. She is a doting aunt and loves to travel and go on adventures. Thank you, Jill, for sharing your gifts with all of us today. Good morning. This scripture is a familiar story for us that we normally hear at Advent. Mary's pregnancy with the baby Jesus is the foundational start to Christianity. Today's service has been based on the United Methodist Program book written by Lisa Beth White. She highlighted a story within this story that doesn't get much notice. Mary and Elizabeth come together for three months, two women of different generations, both pregnancies announced by Gabriel. One baby will be known as John the Baptist. One will be known as Jesus. Miss White calls this the gift of mentoring. Let's first look at Elizabeth. She is the daughter of a priest and she marries a priest named Zachariah. After years of not getting pregnant, she is shunned by other people. In those days, people thought not being blessed with children meant Elizabeth or her husband were being punished by God. They were considered sinners, but Luke describes them as righteous and blameless. Her husband could have even divorced her for being barren. Earlier in chapter one of Luke, Elizabeth learns that she is going to bear a child. We aren't exactly sure what age Elizabeth was at this time, but it was an age that women don't normally get pregnant. Her husband describes him and his wife as of advanced age. Then there's Mary. She is legal, a legally engaged young woman. In those days, women got married between 14 and 16 years of age. What must it felt like to be of that young of age and have an angel vis visit you? Then the process, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. I would have been scared and in awe and many other emotions all at the same time. She responds, let it be done to me according to your word. In the next verse, Luke tells us that Mary leaves to visit Elizabeth. Most versions say that she left in haste. Some say worried. Why so fast? Does she not want to tell Joseph or her family that she is pregnant? Does her family know and they are worried she will be killed in an honor killing? Maybe her mother thinks Elizabeth needs help with this pregnancy of an older woman. No matter the reason, she makes a three to four day journey to visit Elizabeth and she stays for three months. So here we have this young teen and an older woman, both pregnant together for three months. I'd like to think that these women, women prayed together, sang together, and discussed what it'd be like raising these two gifts from God. Can you picture them encouraging and comforting each other? I can. I've always loved being around women of all ages. I was very close to my grandmother, Gordon, and she had a lot of great friends. They taught me about planning events developing my, and developed my love of crafting. I loved to hang out with them. I had some great work mentors too. I also, I always credit Judy Rake as being a woman who taught me how to be a woman in the workplace. I also have philanthropic mentors. When I moved to Springfield, one of the first women I connected with was Billy Volstead. I was 23 and she was 71 years at the time, though I wouldn't have guessed that. Billy was a fixture around Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church until her death in 2011. She would invite me over to watch Cub games. One day she found out that I didn't have power after during an ice storm and she insisted I stay with her. 
She even made Belgian waffles for me in the morning, which was quite a treat. The next day of the ice storm, she planned to drive other DAUMC members to doctor's appointments. I asked her not to go because it was too dangerous for a woman who was now in her 80s to be out driving on the ice. She said she was not going to cancel because these ladies needed to make their appointments. She was a strong woman and there was no stopping her. She taught me so much about mission and service and I value her friendship, even though we were 48 years apart. She introduced me to Martha Green and Gwen Lewis and I treasure them also. I credit these women for me now to introducing me to Douglas Avenue and for me being a member here now. Since then, I have met many other lovely women who I consider mentors. And hopefully I can be a mentor to others. I'd like to go back to the title of this message. That comes from Lisa Beth White, the gift of mentoring. Mentoring is a gift and we should celebrate it as such. Our circles may look like we're all divided up by ages and work in bubbles. I'd like to think that behind the scenes, we are one intergenerational group mentoring each other. And I think that is a wonderful gift. Invite you to join with me in a spirit of prayer and I want to remind you that uh, we love to pray with you and so please use that contact form today there's a place there for your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team please join with me now in prayer holy God on this beautiful day of celebration and witness we are grateful for all the ways you call your people to you and to one another knitting us together into community and honoring us to partner with you in your work of love and justice in your world we thank you for the conviction witness and transforming service of united methodist women here with douglas avenue united methodist church and connected throughout the world for over 150 years for generations, their frontline work and service has led us all to love and serve in countless ways, particularly with people who are often pushed to the side, with women, youth, and children, and in areas of ministry that realize your powerful call to peace and justice. 
particularly in economic disparity, systemic racism, and climate justice. Continue to bless the United Methodist Women, Lord, with your wisdom, power, and courage to be the co-creators of your kingdom that you have called them to be. Merciful God, we lift to you the hopes and longings of our hearts. We pray for all who are sick and suffering in body, mind, spirit, and relationship, particularly those sick with COVID-19 infection and those undergoing cancer treatment. We pray for all who are recovering for surgery, particularly young children, and pray that your healing continue to be made real in powerful ways. We pray for all our medical professionals who feel stretched to the breaking point in the midst of pandemic and avoidable infections. Continue to give them your strength and help all of us to do our part to support them and our community in health and wholeness. We pray for the peoples of our world, for help and healing in all the ways that are needed in the face of natural and human-made disaster. We lift up Wouldn't It Be Lovely, Lord, this weekend in this season of multiple outreach events with thanks for all the ways your love is being made real in work, in funding, and in healing. We lift up Compass for Kids as a new year of Club Compass gets underway in these next weeks and for our Club Compass site and volunteers here at Douglas Avenue. We pray for all the ministries, connections, and service of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, particularly our small groups gathering in new ways for study and service, helping to shape us in the likeness of Jesus and sharing your healing and hope. And we thank you for all the blessings, the ones we see and celebrate and the ones we just don't see. Help us to have grateful, hopeful hearts turned toward you and our neighbor in thanksgiving, love, and service. Please join me in praying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Giving of ourselves, our finances, is such a powerful way that we are connected in service together as a church and throughout our world. Thank you for all of the ways that you are giving, and particularly for your financial gifts that make all of the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church a reality. You can continue to give or, or send in your first give, giving if you'd like. Um, you can give through our online giving portal. The link for that is right in the comment section and on the QR code. You can give by um, setting up automatic giving through your financial institution or with ours. If you need help with that, just let us know in the church office. And of course, you can send in your, your checks to the Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church office. All of that giving makes all of our ministry a reality. Thank you for it. We are going to continue now with some special giving offer, offerings and opportunities with our United Methodist Women. And if you'd like to give into these special giving opportunities, you can access that through our online giving portal, through the drop-down menu. Just choose United Methodist Women. And of course, you can send in a, a check made out to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Just put United Methodist Women in the memo line. But let's hear now about these wonderful opportunities to give and serve. Pastor Meredith has explained how to give to our special offering. Now I'm going to explain why. The sewing group organized by Pat Coons is one of the best kept secrets at DAUMC in my opinion. Before COVID, they were meeting once a month to make school bags, diapers like this, all nice and soft flannel, girls' dresses. How cute is this? Boys, tops and shorts all, and book bags. During the pandemic, these women have continued to cut, sew, and turn outfits in their own homes, and we thank them for it. If you are wanting to help, patterns for sewing these items and knitting sweaters can be found at the Midwest Distribution Center's website. They are always in need of new cotton and unwashed flannel. This special offering will allow Pat the ability to purchase what she needs. She loves a good sale, so your money will be put to good use. Also in the theme of knitting together for God's 
good work is our volunteer prayer shawl knitters and the award-winning artist Gwen Lewis and her calendar she sells for Christmas. I love that these women are using their art for missions and donating their time. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Barb Eldridge. I'm a member of Merriam Circle. One of the uh, missions that we support is making diapers, school bags, shorts and tops for boys, girls dresses that go to the Midwest Distribution Center and are distributed all over the world to people that need them. I enjoy this program. I frequently cut up diapers, pat coons, sew them, and other people sew at home. We normally meet in the church to do this, but during the pandemic, several people have been doing it at home. My official job is cutting up diapers. Uh, I enjoy this project because these things go to people that need them and that wouldn't otherwise have them. Pat Coons, our leader, does a wonderful job buying beautiful flannel to make diapers. When have you ever seen more beautiful diaper material than that? And this is a project that we truly believe in. Thank you. Hi, my name is Chantel Corey, and I'm an executive director at Midwest Mission. I want to talk to you today about what happens when the sewing group donates their supplies here at Midwest Mission and how those get processed out. So the supplies get brought in, they get weighed in or counted in to go into our inventory. People here will check them and make sure and do quality control, although the items that we get donated from this group are top notch quality. These ladies have been doing this for years and produce beautiful things that go out to children around the world and around the corner. So how do we figure out where these items go? We get requests in from organizations, mainly our partner Food for the Poor. We let them know the supplies that we have. They reach out to their network of nonprofits in 16 Latin American and Caribbean countries where they have 17 warehouses and nonprofits in country that work with other vetted nonprofits to get items out to the people who have the greatest need, but it can also be trusted in the way they're handling their business, or I'm sorry, handling their nonprofit and how they're treating their clients. Everything that leaves here is a gift from God and a gift from the people who have been sending it. So we want to make sure to steward these gifts in the most respectful and way that we can ensure. Um, that these items are getting to the people who need them the most. Um, when they leave here, most of the time, these items leave on a container that is booked by our partner, Food for the Poor, or to leave through a United States Southern Command shipment for their human humanitarian aid efforts. When a container arrives here at Midwest Mission, we have two hours to fill up that container. Uh, when the once the container is fully loaded, we seal up the container and give the driver a bill of lading. And we give our, our partner who is receiving the items that same bill of lading. When it comes into country, the food for the poor will pick up the items from the dock on their own semi, take it to their own warehouse, we'll process all the items, we'll get a bill of receipt so we know everything made it there okay and compare that with our bill of lading. Once it's all dispersed, we get a disbursement of good report to let us know all the nonprofits that received all the items. We also get follow-up impact report stories that show children using, wearing the clothing that's been made and mothers using the diapers uh, on their newborn children. So it's a great way that we can ensure that these beautifully made and time well spent items have been uh, taken care of through our supply chain. So we so appreciate all those who engage us in this ministry here at Midwest Mission, and we look forward to serving more people in Christ's name. Hi, I'm Karen Brown, and I'm a member of the Lydia Circle here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. When did you first start knitting? How long? Uh, I started knitting when I was 17, so it's about half my life. And why do you enjoy it? Um, I enjoy making things for other people. 
Um, it's something that my sister and I do. Um, she lives um, on the East Coast, but she will send me pictures of things she's made. And in fact, this week I told her I hadn't been knitting very much, and she said, "Oh, really?" and sent me a video of a stack of things that she's knit. So it's kind of a little gentle com competition as well. Um, yeah, it's soothing to do. Tell us about what is a prayer shawl. So a prayer shawl can be made out of knitting or crochet. When someone makes a prayer shawl, often um, they are praying over the yarn as they're working, um, or sometimes they're, they aren't. They're just knitting um, while they're doing other things, watching TV or going to church or whatnot. Um, but then, you know, the blessing in giving that knit item to the church and then um you know is part of the gift but then also when we decide that someone needs a prayer shawl someone that's very sick or going through a really hard time in their life um we pass around this you know work of art and everyone in the church prays on it which i know sounds weird in covid times for everyone to touch something without sanitizer but um, it's beautiful to watch everyone hold the, the item in their hand and pray for the person and pass it to their neighbor. And it's like, you know, as the string is woven into something, all of those prayers get woven in as they pass it around too. And then it goes to the person and hopefully it gives them comfort. So how do you feel when one of your prayer shawls is being used? Um... Well, I love it, but I'm also my own worst critic. So I'll, you know, see every flaw if I see that person, but I love it. And I know, um, you know, I made one that was special for Winnie and I gave that to her and I know that Cameo has it now. And so that is, to me, it's a blessing that, you know, it, it stayed with their family and that those prayers still stay with their family. So if someone today watching this wanted to be a part of the prayer shop program, how could they do that? Well, um, they can knit or crochet a shawl. Um, it doesn't have to be a triangle. It can be um, a square. It can be a rectangle. It can be whatever oblong shape you want. Um, the yarn generally, we, you know, whatever you want to use, it can be, um, something really soft. It can just be something you have that you need to use up. Um, because everyone always seems to find the right prayer shawl for them, even when there's very few in the basket. So, um, you know, if you want to make a prayer shawl and um, just, you can bring it to the church and put it in the basket. If you want to put a tag on it, who made it, you're welcome to. If you want to be anonymous, you can do that too. Um, there's no set pattern to follow, but if you look online, there are lots of prayer shawl patterns too. Hi, I'm Gwen Lewis. Uh, Jill is here visiting me, looking at some of my paintings, and I hope she's enjoying them. So when did you start doing artwork? Artwork? It, well, I was about in grade school, I would say. That was quite a while ago. Huh? <laughs> and why did you graduate to pastels? Well, uh, I had been using all the other medium. Watercolor, I found, was the most difficult, although I had done several watercolors. And um, I had been using pastels teaching kids. It, my fifth graders did some pastels. And I thought it was kind of fun, and you could correct things easily, whereas in watercolor, you can't. So I find that they're more enjoyable because they're more relaxing to do. You can always change something, and it's no problem. And how did you get the idea to do a calendar? I don't know. I think I went into Kim Photo uh, Resource Center and I saw a calendar that someone had made using photographs sitting on her counter. And so I looked at that and I thought, oh, I could do that with my paintings. And 
it would be a nice thing to uh, have the UMW uh, use for their missions. So if I sold enough calendars, you know, I can hand them a nice profit. Now, they cost me like $5 to have made, and I sell them for $10. So I don't get any remuneration myself. I wouldn't think of that. And so at the printer right now mm -hmm. is your 10th anniversary calendar. That's Tell us correct. about it. All right. Well, for the 10th anniversary, I decided that instead of having a new, totally new set of pictures that I have been doing for the past nine years, I've never repeated one, and that always has been kind of a sense of pride because I didn't have any repeats. And so this year I thought, oh, maybe it'll be nice to take out some of my favorites from all the past years and combine them into one calendar. And that way I figured I could have, you know, the best of the best, maybe, hopefully. <laughs> That is a pastel of the Sangamon River in winter that I kind of improvised and added to and kind of made it partly my imagination. I didn't have that exact photograph, so I kind of, you know, used my own uh, ideas to make it look kind of like a sunset at the Sangamon River. That is uh, Vermont in the fall. My aunt took a lot of photographs when she lived out there years ago. And that is a scene of Vermont. That is my water lily pond. And that, if you can get it, yeah. That is the Jordan River in Nazareth. When uh, I was there, I thought it came out pretty nice. That is in near Phoenix, Arizona in April one year when we were out there, my husband and I were out there visiting Greg and his family. That is the bridge, covered bridge down at the Sugar Creek near Glenarm. And all of these will be a part of your new calendar Those this year. Those will all be in the new calendar. With some of your favorites. Yeah. Gwen will have her calendar available in early November for $10 each. And remember, proceeds go to United Methodist Women. Good morning, I'm Becca Philbrick and I'm a member of the Lydia Circle. Please join us in singing, Help Us Accept Each Other.
thank you so much for joining in this special time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church as, we've, as we have been celebrating United Methodist Women. We pray that this whole worship experience has been powerful and meaningful and provides connection for you in your life of faith. Please continue to join with us in online worship or join with us for in-person worship at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church on Sunday mornings at 8.15 and 10.30. We love you so much. We want to be able to pray with you and connect with you. So please use that contact form so that we can do that and, um, and just take advantage of what we can be and how we can love and follow Jesus together. And now as you go into your day, go knowing that God loves you, that Jesus goes with you, that the Holy Spirit lights your path for that powerful love and service that he is calling you to every day. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.